part two, what a father to teach a teenage daughter. The last what we talked about the introduction, the foundation of the Christian faith. God, the Creator, Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. We looked into nakedness. Our responsibilities as fathers that God has given us. Part three, we're going to look at dress. Now we're going to cover the nakedness. You can cover it and still be revealing. Human nature defiles God so much that we can do and do the littlest possible thinking that God approves. 1 Timothy 2.9 you already a Bible believer, you know this is the spot where we're gonna would go to eventually. There's two ways. There's God, there's Satan. Jesus is the way, religion is religion. You can be improperly dressed. Or you can be properly dressed. 1 Timothy 2.9 In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and severity. Not with broiled hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Now, when we're talking about dress, we could read on, but that doesn't appeal to what we're talking about. What we just read is a simple woman. She will not stand out in a crowd. She doesn't fix herself to be attractive. Her attraction is what God has given her. Mine is nothing. It's not of smells, it's not of ornaments, it's not of fixing, it's not of metal. Women adore themselves in modest apparel. And where do you go with modest? The word has deteriorated over the years of the English language. And as we talked about last time with nakedness, there are some people who go to go to church, call themselves Christians, and yet they are not modest in their apparel. Anything opposite. But yet they're Christians. And they are a terrible example to our daughters. Modest apparel apparel that we're going to talk about now doesn't show what needs not to be shown that some apparel being worn today is still in effect nakedness though you got clothes shame facedness what's that what is shame what is shame in America today what could you know what's wrong t with America today? Women don't blush. I have been in a workplace where the woman has told the dirtiest joke. I've been in a workplace where the women are the most filthy, vile in their language. And what it's talking about here when it comes to the parents, you, you look at yourself like, oh, wait a minute, no, I can't wear that. Can't wear that no more causes shame broiled hair now what's wrong with doing your hair not to the extent that you overdo your hair people spend hundreds of dollars for their hair that will last in the next rainstorm or wake up in the morning that's too much you got to teach your daughter that you got a limited budget a husband to be has a limited budget there's no place to put in hundreds of dollars in hair or hundreds of hours into hair. 
Yeah, put it in a bun, braid it and all that. Yeah, that's pretty. But when you got flowers and birds and crap 300 miles high, that's an attention getter. What's another example of that? Around Easter time in church, you get these women that come in these weird hats. The biggest, stupidest, ugliest hat. And all they want is people to look at them. And what's talking about Paul is telling Timothy when it comes to women, don't fix yourself to everybody. Oh, look at her. That she attracts. See, you can attract a man with dress just as much as being naked. Man's got a one-track mind. Man, two things, sex and food. That's it. And women know that. And Satan knows that. What is the three sins? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And Paul is telling Timothy, as far as the women, be simple women. Don't be old hags, you know, I mean, do it properly. Do it within standards. And it's simple, and there's no one argument if you want to live by God. The person who's going to argue is if they don't want to do what God wants us, tells us to do. That's the problem. But, 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 yeah, you just don't want to do what God go away. Fathers, I'm going to be very frank. We're doing these videos twice. Doing one for you, one for my daughter. Breast, butt, Thighs, frontal, hips, belly buttons, etc. Cover them up. How's that for modest? They ought not to be seen. If your daughter wears an outfit, the breast, the butt, the thighs, the frontal, the hips, the belly button are all covered up. You got a good start. Breasts were made by God for three things. Well, two things and a third subject. They were made for nursing infants, Genesis 21 2, to provide milk to an infant. Breastfeeding in public. I'm not even going to touch that. That has nothing to do with your daughters. You got a teenage daughter and it's breastfeeding, you got a problem. You ought to got this lesson earlier. Okay? Number two. Proverbs 5.19. I'll give you the verse first. Proverbs 5.19. Therefore, the husband's pleasure. They are for the baby. They are for the husband, according to the Bible. So what are you going to do have your daughter flash them in front of men? And today I worry about 2016, flashing for other women. Oh, man, I don't believe I have to say that. It is never, they are never, never for community display. Well, what about National Geographic? That's National Geographic. That's Africa. We're in America. And it just shows you America's getting very close to African ways, African roots. Those things used to be in the National Geographic. Now you can see them in New York and four other states. I seen a woman one time in the grocery store I worked at. I, I, I was bagging. I took one look at her. I thought she was out of National Geographic. No, she wasn't naked. Just the face and all that and the, the rings and all. I was like, man, I seen a picture like that in National Geographic. Genesis 2.25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis 3.21. Unto Adam also and to his wife, did God, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them? After the fall of Genesis 3, God said, Here, what's that, God? That's clothes on a clothes hanger. Put them on. Now, have you thought about that? Who else was in the world? 
just Adam and Eve and God. And God said, put them clothes on. We are under the fall. We are under the curse. God said, here's some clothes. Now, we, later on we'll get into it. We're talking about your teenage daughter. Your teenage daughter is only to be nowhere breast shown. Because nowhere she should be infant. <coughs> nowhere she should be in nursing infants. And at a teenage daughter, she should not have a husband. So those breasts better be covered up. I'm being frank. You been to the beach? Where they wear their bras? My daughter don't wear a bra to the beach. Yes, she does. She calls it a bikini. It's like shacking up. It's called fornication. Mafia. It's called murder and drugs and everything else. Ooh. And yes, Hollywood has made a great introduction with Barbara Eden displaying her belly button. And Mary Tyler Moore with her Capri Sacks. So look at the junk we have on the television today. When you watch a television program today, you're going to have up in, the, up in the top corner what this program is going to have as far as language, sexual conduct, and violence. That's what, the television has got to tell you what to expect. Why not just get rid of all that and just have a good, clean... Well, that wouldn't sell money. Television started with a belly button. Started with smooth, slick, slacks. And look at the junk and filth on it today. Presenting curves, body outline, figure is a sin. We may make fun of the Muslim women and what they wear. But you cannot have sexual body fantasies. She's all covered up. You look at a Muslim woman walking down the street like, what is behind that? You look at an American woman and you're like, well, I see what's behind it. One thing about those Muslims over the Christians, they keep their women covered up. And then we cry, we got the Constitution, we got spiritual liberty, we can do what we want. How bad they teach their women. If a man looks upon a woman to lust after in his heart, he has already committed adultery with her. And women, I'll say 50%, I'll give a good 50% of the time, help the help them men commit adultery by their clothes. I have known women, I, I, I swear, I don't know how they put their pants on. They must Vaseline themselves up and take a running dive. Lord forbid they'd pass gas and crack the, crack the jeans. That's wrong. That's a sin. When you get, oh, we're American Christian. Do you know what the women wore in the Bible? Almost the same thing what the women wear in the, the Muslim country. The same kind of outfit. It covered all. Can you see Ruth wearing Jardash jeans? Got the look, baby? I don't think so. And for some women, it's a hard time. Some of your body features that your daughter has, you're going to have to do some shopping. You're going to have to do some dressing room. You're going to have to try a lot of different clothes on that child. You're going to have to make an effort to cover as complete as you can. Uh, again, that's between the mother and the daughter to go shopping for clothes. It's got to be. That girl has to be as covered up as she most it can and if God's gifted her you put the quadruple X 
shirt on. I don't, I'd rather have to look baggy and then Matthew 5 28. You gotta make that effort. No V necks, strapless, tank tops, on and on. And again, no clothes fitting, clothes, ugh, clothes fitting or body hugging clothing. Modesty is not when the bra straps can be revealed. Come on, fathers. You grew up like I did in school. Take that wolf instinct that you grew up with and apply that to the other wolves that are growing up today with your daughter. Man is man. Anything will turn him on. Don't provoke it with modesty. Don't provoke it. It gets the male thinking. Thinking about adultery, Matthew 5, 28. The sexual mind of a male is an appetite. When you got a V-neck, strapless, tank tops, it is a menu to that craving. Your daughter may be advertising to the appetite of that man if she's not modestly dressed. Almost like getting a chicken in a bucket, breast, thigh, butt, legs. Come on, isn't that what men like? Stop having your daughter be like fried chicken. Put her in the bucket with the lid on. You know what men, you know what men like? Don't put her body on his platter. Don't even put it on the menu. Don't even give that guy opportunity. If cleavage of your breast, your butt, or your frontal show, it is sin. They got names for them now. You're causing Matthew 5.28. And yes, in Baptist churches, that's a problem. Christians. I could tell you pastors' wives who have a problem with that from past churches. You need to teach your daughter, and I need to teach my daughter a breast check. And I'm not talking about for cancer. That needs to be done also. But we're not talking about that. You need to have your daughter, before she steps out of the house, step in front of a mirror. Step in front of a mirror. And bend over. There was just an accident or something outside, so... You need to have your daughter bend over in front of that mirror. What she sees, the world will see. And how many times will she have to go in the marketplace or in public or in church and bend over for all to see? Sometimes they don't even have to bend over. Do they? Modest apparel is not letting it be revealed. Modest is covering up.
they are to be covered. Be embarrassed and ashamed to display your flesh. Short shorts. First Corinthians six nineteen. First Corinthians six nineteen. What? Know ye not your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not of your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Treat your body as if God owned it. Acts 20, 28. By the way, with Acts 20, 28, he does own you. He does own your daughter if you're saved. You're supposed to glorify God, not the flesh. You're supposed to bring out the Holy Spirit, not the body. Keep it all behind and under clothes. Women with below their women with their pants below their butt, displaying their panties, and they're doing that now. The women is a sin. We've seen women just with body paint. That's naked. That paint is not clothes. Jezebel had clothes and she painted her face. It's nakedness, as we discovered before. Lesson number one. Your clothes with nakedness. Your clothes, I'm clothed. Your clothes may also cause adultery. But God, I'm not naked. You're still advertising. Let's look at Matthew 5.28. Now we quote this off and on. Well, it's not my fault. It could be your fault. As I said, don't put your daughter on a menu. 528. But I say unto you, Jesus Christ, red letter, if you've got a red letter Bible, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, whosoever, it could be another woman. Look how God look how God wrote that. He didn't say that a man looketh upon a woman to lust after her. He said whosoever, 2016, a woman can look upon a woman to lust after her. Friend, we're in 2016. You may have to fight your daughter off other women. Isn't that sick? Doesn't that tell you we need to put red flags up with our teenage daughters? We don't need to worry about the men alone. We have to worry about men and women looking at our daughters. But whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. Ooh, look at that woman. Oh. Ooh, la, 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 la. Has committed, has committed adultery with her. Or reigning her. There's no, there is no physical attraction. There is no unclothing. There is no bed. There's no kissing. There's no hugging. There's no touching. There is adultery. Just by thinking, and God said with her, she could be charged with adultery by making him look at her, making him lust after her because of her nakedness last time or because of what she's not wearing. This study. If you dress or the absence thereof causes him to desire with her, both of you are charged with adultery. You caused it. Your daughter caused it. The woman caused it. And it doesn't have to be physical. Oh, it got to be a thought. You need to realize if you let your daughter dress the way of the world, How many tally marks is in her books for adulteress? And she may be still a virgin. 
and be adulterer. Your daughter may be a virgin, but still be accounted for adultery. Now that's an oxymoron. That's a moron of a father who will not suppress his daughter in dressing properly. And these girls are getting worse and worse, younger and younger. Pornography, adulterers, and they don't even know they're being charged. In the age of, of pornography, of internet, magazines, media, videos, cassette, whatever it is, both the person on the screen and the person watching the screen, the person that's in the picture and the person that's watching the picture, God is chalking them as adulterers and they met, never even ever met or will ever meet. And the charge of adultery. If your daughter ever has her beautiful picture taken, unclothed or clothed, and it goes on the internet, it goes into the media. And it causes a man or a woman to lust worldwide. Your daughter will be charged with adultery. Modest apparel will prevent her from being charged with adultery. Keep your daughter modest. Realize the thoughts of the brain, the head, the heart are just as guilty as acting in the flesh. Magazines, television, beaches, just walking somewhere. If the lack of clothes turns him on, you're guilty of adultery. How's that, Father? Does that really, really turn you on to realize that your daughter could be committing one of the big ten, of the big ten sins, the Ten Commandments. And you didn't even realize. You never studied the Bible. You had no idea. You want to get right with the Lord, you got to repent. You got to get right. You got to straighten her out. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take work. It's going to take sacrifice. And if you are doing, you got a proper door. Her clothes are proper. Keep going. Keep fighting. Keep doing. God bless. Thank the Lord for a proper daughter. March on. Now, First Timothy two. If your daughter is modest, and she's proper, and does not make them look, she does not. You do not allow her to put her body on a menu and he looks and he sees and he lusts that wasn't with her that's his own charge of adultery if she did not cause it she did not provoke it she had no charge of it she was modest she was right the charge goes to him alone Now, where do I put this one? Listen up, dads. Advertising. My daughter's got shirts with this. Pretty much her shirts are full. Because look, clothing companies have held the imagination of males. Do you know that? Do you, do you ever think about this? By placing their logos, their slogans, and words on clothing. Where their advertising, their words, their, their picture, their icon, their image, where it's behind the clothes, behind those images, items of 
advertising are depressed. You know, they got pants now with words across the butt. Why put it there? Isn't that one of the things that men look at? The butt? Thighs? Don't they have sweatpants with... with why would they put them there? Because that's where you look. They don't put it under the clothes, do they? Show me, besides the tag, show me an advertisement they put on your fruit or looms. You don't look there. You can't see there. Frontals. They know where men look. That's where they advertise. Having certain shirts with certain words on certain parts of your daughter's body need not to be. You need to investigate. What that, what that girl's wearing, you need to investigate, find out what that really means, and realize, oh boy, that shirt needs to go. Imagine a Christian woman wearing a t-shirt on the front that says, Got milk? Genesis 21 2. How about send your Christian daughter out in the world wearing a shirt that says, just do it? You need to look at the other ones, too. No sunglass company or business advertises on the lens. You don't ever see glasses or sunglasses having advertising. That's not where men look. We look out of them, but we don't look out of them. We don't look at a woman's eyes. Stop making the men look at your daughter by advertising on ads where her body is underneath. Number four. Violation. And maybe we should have done this one earlier. Reporting. I wanted to get this. Our next topic is marriage. <coughs> Reporting. Your daughter needs to learn that if anything has happened to her, she is innocent. Most cases, she has done nothing wrong. She ought to be non fearful. She ought to be free to come to mom and dad when someone tries to get her naked. Me, when something scary happens, I get in a panic and I get a little angry and stuff like that. Something like that, I just need to back off. Relate what's happening, then come back to it. But you need to. She ought not be scolded, yelled at, punished. Never. Even if whoever's done it, friends, same age group, club, class, church, even if it's joking, playing, or tricks. If it involves anything of trying to get her naked or trying to touch her. She must be able to be free to come to mom and dad and report it. I don't know about a teacher in a school. Or the principal. I don't know what they would do. She ought to be free to report it to her church. If someone's in the church has tried to violate her, the pastor, the assistant pastor, the youth director, whoever, she ought to be able to walk up to that guy and say, I've been violated without being reprimanded, without being ashamed, without feeling guilt. And if she's made feel guilt, she's made feel that she caught, then there's a bigger problem. But let's talk about... It's essential for her to know she's got to report the situation.
needs to be told who tried it and who violated her. And what happened, how far did it go? You may even need to get medical attention. Fathers, this happens. Calm down. Don't get the rifle, don't get the gun. Let police and social services and the church help you. Calm. Don't be a vigilante. You'll ruin it for your daughter. Have them arrested no matter what. And I know that, and I'm not going to get into it. Request the authorities. We maintain her innocence. Maintain her being guiltless. Maintain that communication with her through the whole time. Make sure she knows she hasn't done anything wrong. In Deuteronomy 22, 25. But if a man finds a betrothed dance on the field, and the man forced her and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die. Because she tried to stop it. He was she was overforced. The burden he placed on her. The Bible lets her go. And we'll close there. Close. Keep her properly dressed. Watch her fashion. Let her not imitate the world. You can cover up the nakedness and still be naked. Remember, she may be causing adultery by what she wears. And when something has violated her, love her, hug her, support her, and report them.